Um, I kind of, I'm kind of happy, you know, a lot of times as an adult, 49 years old, this idea of being stupid, for every student, yes, of uh, any school, when you learn something, do you feel like you've actually gone to school for the, for the reason of learning? Yes. Now, I would say that I'm a student of government today, and when I learned that other nations of the world have individual states, I should not feel dumb that I didn't know that because I don't know everything. Yes. I should feel smart that I found that out. Now, in the United States, yes, a stronger union was needed, so a system was set up in which state governments yeah, would give part of their power to a central government. Such a system was created by the United States Constitution, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which went into effect in 1789. Now, it went into effect in 1789. Yes, It was ratified in 1781. Which I was real close on that 220 years then, wasn't I? Yes, it was. Now, under this constitution, certain powers were kept by the states. The newly formed federal government had, however, complete control over matters which affected the entire nation. Now, let's say you're the Supreme Court of the United States. Your thought was, well, I've been appointed a Supreme Court Justice of the United States of America, and my actual job description is to hear cases that involve the Constitution of the United States. Yes. Now, a lot of people would say I'd be obligated to go to the location of the actual court, of the Supreme Court. <laughs> but when the jurisdiction of the nation is the federal legislation of the United States Constitution, yeah, the Supreme Court justices can go where I'm at. <laughs> because they have the whole jurisdiction of the nation <laughs> as what they hear. See, judges and justices... <laughs> are limited to the actual jurisdiction of their geographic authority. Yes, but I can obligate all the Supreme Court justices to move to Clallam County to hear the case, yes, of the issuance of a court order that involved the use of forgeries, yes, and the full faith and credit of the United States Constitution. <laughs> now, they try to tell me I have to go to their location for them to be able to hear the case. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is the federal jurisdiction of the United States Constitution <laughs> means that they can go to my location. <laughs> we can rent a little place someplace in Clallam County. And they can hear the court case anywhere in the jurisdiction of the nation. <laughs> now, when you talk jurisdiction, yeah, it happens to be the jurisdiction of the Constitution and laws of the citizens of the United States. <laughs> and quite possibly, I mean, I, I will fact check, check, check this, yes, is any location in the world where I, as a United States citizen, am? Yes. I can obligate the Supreme Court of the United States to have to go where I'm at to hear the case <laughs> because the case involves the jurisdiction of the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> and since I'm a citizen of the United States, <laughs> I carry with me the jurisdiction of the nation and the authority of the Constitution in every nation of the world where they hear a case about how it affects the United States of America. <laughs> now, <laughs> there seemed to be this question about jurisdiction of the United States. See, it's easier for me to move the individual justices of the Supreme Court, yes, than to move myself and my family. Bouch! And my thought is, well, if they have a problem listening right now, you might not appreciate that any judge, yes, in any county can hear the county's case in any location of the county. Yes, any Supreme Court justice of any state can hear the case anywhere within the individual state itself. Yes, because my citizenship is the United States of America. The Supreme Court justices of the United States can hear the case anywhere in the world where it involves the Constitution of the United States and its governing power. Yes, of me being a citizen of this great.